Hello. It's certainly looking like an interesting 10 days of weather ahead. It's going to be predominantly cold, frosty, and certainly in the short to medium term, ice is likely to be the biggest hazard. But there will also be some snow, and particularly as we go into next week, a couple of scenarios we need to talk through. At the moment, however, the main scenario is northerly winds. That is why it has turned so cold and so frosty. The cold air in place and likely to stick around through the weekend and beyond. There is some warm air, not too far away, not one, but two areas of low pressure down to the southwest. And this one in particular, a tropical weather feature that may well influence things next week. More on that in a moment. Let's get back to these northerly winds. I'm not going to go through the details of our weather warnings here. Check out our shorter range forecasts, our app or our website for details of those weather warnings. But we do have northerly winds, snow showers over northern Scotland, wintry showers across eastern and western areas. And with the cold air in place, wherever we've got showers, that does bring the risk of ice. For many, though, I want to show you this map because actually for many it's going to be a sparkling day of sunshine on Thursday and similarly so on Friday. Cold but largely sunny. We do have this line of enhanced precipitation, which means uh, the rain will pep up a little bit on the coast. But inland, we could see a bit more in the way of sleet and snow, certainly over the higher ground of southeast Scotland, northeast England initially on Thursday evening. And it could come down to lower levels as we go through the evening as that weather front drifts its way southwards. The low pressure maintains its grip over the UK, but it also kind of weakens as it does so. And the isobars start to space out, meaning the winds are going to fall light. But it will maintain that cold feel through the weekend and into the early part of next week. In fact, let's rewind the clock and take a look at the temperature profile because it's just all about the blues. The cold air being drawn down by those northerly winds. Yes, the northerly winds themselves may start to ease, but the cold air remains in place. And wherever we have this low pressure becoming, as I say, slow moving and kind of losing its identity, that will bring some wintry showers across almost anywhere. But the devil will be in the detail through this weekend. What we can also say is that as the isobars open up and as the winds therefore fall light, we are likely to see more fog patches forming. And where we get the fog with the cold air, temperatures may well struggle this weekend to get much above freezing. So for the weather this weekend, we know it's going to stay cold. There will be some wintry showers around, but for some, there'll be some decent spells of sunshine. The hazards, however, this weekend, with that cold air in place, will be, yes, there will be some snow around again, Details, depending on exactly where we see any old weather fronts or where that low pressure just changes the wind direction. Icy patch is likely to be the biggest hazard, but also increasingly with those lighter winds, some stubborn freezing fog patches too. And that will continue into Monday. So the weather patterns don't shift too much by the time we get to Monday. Still got the cold air in place old weather fronts around, some freezing fog and some ice as well. But what has changed by the time we get to Monday is how close the low pressure systems are to the southwest. This one approaching is that one we saw earlier. If we rewind the clock, that tropical weather feature way down to the southwest. Over the next five or six days, it is likely to head up towards the UK. I say likely because that is just one scenario. That's just the Met Office computer model scenario. If we run the models many times and look at different models, well, we get different tracks for that low. It is a tropical weather feature, and that always adds to the complications. We are talking four, five, six days ahead. So these are the potential tracks, the green lines, the model runs from the Met Office computer model, the blue and the purple from the European and the American model runs. Now you can see there that most of them do take them up towards, take that low up towards the UK by this time next week, but some of them have it veering off towards Newfoundland. If that were to be the case, it would tend to fizzle out and just enhance the colder air continuing across the UK. But I say perhaps a more likely uh, scenario is that that low does approach the UK in some form or other. Why is it important? Well, it's bringing tropical air, it's bringing moisture that will hit that colder air in place across the UK. And that is a recipe for more significant wintry weather and the potential 
potential for more widespread snowfall, as we shall see. But as I say, there are complications. You can see that not all the models are agreeing, and that is shown quite nicely here, actually, by this map. This is a projection for Saturday, and it shows the difference between two models, the Met Office model and the European model, to be specific. Take a slice about halfway up through the atmosphere and subtract one from the other. Now, here's the UK, and you can see that that's all pretty green, and that means that when you take one model away from the other, there isn't a lot going on. So there isn't a lot of difference. So what we can say is that the computer models close to the UK are in pretty good agreement. This is for Saturday. But notice these big blobs out in the Atlantic. That is to do with the position of that low by the time we get to the weekend. And these large blobs, you can see, they're the, they're the biggest errors, if you like, between the two models by the time we get to Saturday across almost the entirety of the Northern Hemisphere. So that is why that low is so important. And that is why there is quite a bit of uncertainty about how that low approaches as we go through next week. This is another way of looking at it when we run the European model many, many times. And each of these red lines represents where the warm front from that low pressure system could be by Tuesday of next week. Some of them would have that warm front just about into the southwest of the UK, but the majority are keeping it by this stage down to the southwest. But there is quite a big what we call spread there, quite a lot of variation. So again, that uncertainty about where that low is going to be. And it does make a big difference on the weather that we're going to see. Will it turn milder with that low coming up and bringing warmer air with it and also the risk of some snow? Or will we stay cold? Well, again, looking at the European model now for temperature projections, this map is showing the probability from all those computer model runs of the European model uh, of temperatures being four degrees or more above average. And you can see the whites and the, maybe some hints of pale green suggesting that the probability of that happening is pretty low, somewhere between zero and 10% generally. But if you switch that around to the probability of four degrees below average, then that probability has now jumped up across the, U across the UK, European model, suggesting a much higher probability of keeping that colder air in place through next week. What does that mean? Well, broadly speaking, then, we're looking at a couple of scenarios with that low coming in from the southwest. This is the less likely scenario. But the low could drift up from the southwest from midweek and bring that warm air, the moisture, hitting the cold air and for a time bringing some heavy snow across parts of the south. And then we're going to have this transition zone across parts of England and Wales where the snow could be more significant. Again, depending on the exact track and the exact intensity, it could bring more wintry weather, but eventually then turning things milder from the southwest with the warmer air and things turning slushy and mushy. All the while, in this scenario, Scotland and Northern Ireland just stay in the cold air. Now, the other more likely scenario, which at this stage we're putting about 70 percent on, is that that low pressure system either doesn't really get towards the UK or it just drifts down towards the south, uh, heading perhaps into France, taking the warmer air with it and leaving the UK with north or northeasterly winds and therefore in the colder air. Still the likelihood of wintry showers to come in that colder air across the east, but the more significant snowfall from the low itself would be more confined to the far south. Now, again, don't take that map too literally. That doesn't necessarily mean you're definitely going to get snow in that zone because a lot's got to happen and the exact track of the low will make a big difference about whether we see rain, sleet or snow, but it does bring a greater risk across the south but most places will simply stay in the colder air with more wintry showers coming in on a northeasterly wind in this more likely scenario. That is from midweek. Both of those scenarios really from midweek onwards. Either way, it's going to stay cold and certainly in the shorter term, hard frosts and ice means you need to be weather ready. So make sure you're doing everything you can to be ready for this cold spell of weather, which is likely to last Check on your vulnerable friends, relatives, 
and make sure that you are prepared by searching up Weather Ready. There's lots of tips and advice on the Met Office website. Also, make sure you keep up to date with the latest Met Office weather warnings. The best way to do that, the app or our website, or of course, there's lots more if you follow us across social media.